Okay, uh, thanks for being here. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, leading and following in the uh, context of uh, pay what you want mechanisms. So uh, the evidence from Facebook shows that nothing captures people's attentions, attention as well as pictures of animals. So ideally, I would like to have kids. Uh, have, uh, yeah, kids also would work, but or cats perhaps, but cats are not really good followers, so I, I chose penguins. It's also good to have a, a funny joke. I'm not so good with jokes, so I borrowed one. Anyway, so um, this is uh, about a specific uh, 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 participative pricing procedures that pay what you want. So it's not exactly charitable giving, but it's quite similar in that people have make uh, voluntary contributions. So you get some product and then you choose how much you're willing to pay for that. Um, the uh, famous example being the uh, radio head, I think, uh, uh, band, uh, uh, one of their albums. And um, in theory, if you only care about your material uh, well-being, then you don't want to uh, um, contribute anything, or you contribute to Epsilon. If the lowest contribution allowed is $1, you're going to pay $1. But there are all sorts of things you can care about other than your material well-being, you can care about the seller per se, you can care about the existence of this particular business because you want to uh, take advantage of, of, of this existence in the future. You may want to comply with a social norm, you may care about your self-image, you may look a bit stupid if you get something valuable and you only pay a, a dollar for that. So, um, and indeed there is some evidence that in some examples, in some, uh, for some businesses it seems to work, uh, th th there are institutions that have that have uh, used this kind of uh, uh, um, setup for, for a longer period of time. There is some evidence on uh, declining uh, prices, but th there is little, little research on that. And specifically, what we want to investigate in this, uh, in this uh, uh, mechanism is uh, leading by example. Leading by example seems to work uh, in different contexts. For instance, if you're uh, royalty and you want to uh, uh, persuade your subjects that the war you're fighting is a, is a, is a just one, uh, then you may want to send one of your, your kids or grandkids, maybe the one you like less, to fight in the <laughs> war. And then it's a personal signal. It's a, it's a personal cost that you're incurring. So, so that's a, it may be a credible signal that, that the war is just, if there are just wars. So, it, it might also uh, work in the pay what you want uh, 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 um, context. So we're interested whether past, high past contributions make people uh, uh, contribute more. Now, like I said, there is very little uh, known so far, as far as I know, about uh, uh, pay what you want because it's a fairly new uh, format and uh, it hasn't been studied that much, especially the price, uh, the con dynamics of contributions. But it, the past contributions seem to matter in, 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 in charitable giving, as, as uh, probably uh, all of you know uh, better than I do. So um, practitioners believe that uh, past contributions matter. Either uh, past contributions uh, uh, made uh, in, so in the earlier phase of the campaign or during the silent phase, so you, you encourage some rich uh, donors to, 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 uh, to, to give or to pledge, and then you say, okay, we have raised already that much money. And, uh, and, and now it's your, time to, it's just your time to give. And there are, as you will also know, there are some field experiments that try to test this uh, in, a, in a more structured way. And, and some of them uh, uh, confirm that past contributions have a sizable positive impact on, 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 future, on later contributions. For example, there is a, a nice paper by Martin and Randall who run uh, uh, four treatments in a New Zealand uh, art museum. Uh, uh, so there was a, a box for donations, and the box was uh, either filled with, with uh, some higher denominations or lower or some, uh, just some coins, or there was an empty box. And then it, it affected uh, uh, contributions in a predictable way. That is, the uh, average amount given was highest in this treatment. Uh, the number of contributions made was highest in this treatment, and this treatment, the empty box, uh, performed uh, worst, <laughs> which uh, may be for different reasons why these things uh, matter. There is also other, there are also su other studies that that that, that uh, find that confirm that uh, that uh, that uh, past contributions may matter. So, uh, so there are some theoretical explanations. 
It could be in terms of non-constant return on donations. So for instance, if you're, um, if you're close to some targets, uh, then people might like the idea that you're gonna reach the target and may be more willing to contribute more because they believe you're gonna uh, reach the target. It can be about conditional cooperation. You want to give conditional on other giving. You may uh, uh, learn something about the quality of, of, of the cause from uh, past contributions. If people have given a lot of money, then apparently it's worth it. And it may also be about like, uh, establishing a social norm. You're not sure what is the proper amount you should give, but given that people have given that much on average in the past, then you may want to follow suit. There, is, there are some studies, experimental studies, laboratory experiments that, that try to test uh, so some of these. Now, many of these, if not all of these, can also apply to, to the uh, context of uh, pay what you want. And it's interesting to see if indeed past contributions matter, and if so, whether we can uh, disentangle possible ways uh, or possible reasons uh, for which they might matter. So the data that we have, it's, it's not a field experiment, it's a field data that we, uh, we use a, a, a natural variation in the data for our um, identification of, of the effect. So what, what the data we have is from a, a Polish uh, e-book uh, distributor, uh, uh, which is called uh, BookRage. It's, it's not in Polish. Anyway, uh, it's modeled after a humble bundle, and it sells bundles of e-books using pay what you want. So the way it uh, looks like is uh, more or less like that. So um, you, you, you have the titles, okay? Uh, you have the titles, the authors. You can learn, if you click on that, you can learn more about the book. Um, and then we have sold already that many bundles. Uh, you know what the average amount contributed so far was. You get a bonus if you exceed the mean amount contributed previously. You get a bonus also sometimes when you, uh, when you uh, exceed a, a fixed amount that they specify. But in principle, you can just uh, pay one zlotis, which is a negligible amount, and you get four, four e-books for, for this minimum amount. As these, and these books, uh, so if you're willing to contribute more than the average, then probably it's not just because of the bonus you're getting, because effectively you're, you're paying like 100 times more per this additional book than in any of these books. So you have some incentives to, to meet. Uh, and, and also, typically, you can find the pirated copy of this book anyway for free. So probably if you, if you want to contribute something more than one's lot, it is not just selfish uh, behavior, but, but, but it's something else. And also, you don't only get to know what was the mean amount contributed previously, but also you, s you see the top contributors, the history of top contributors. You always have eight of them, unless, of course, you're among the very first eight who have contributed in this particular campaign. <coughs> so you know the mean amount and the top eight amounts, which is nice because it gives us some exogenous variation. So whether the ninth amount matters, well, it should not, because you don't see it, right? But the eighth amount could possibly matter. So we can see if people react to that. And also, if there is a high contribution, whether you happen to uh, access the website just before this high contribution was made, or just after the uh, contribution was made, should be pretty much random, because this it's the same time of the day anyway. The contributions uh, come frequently. There are hundreds of them, right? So, so Essentially, what, what is happening here, is there is some exogenous variation to that. So we can, we can try to see if the, if the mean uh, contribution that was made previously matters, and also whether the contributions, uh, the top contributions matter. And we believe that um, the mean contribution might tell you something about what is the right amount, what you should be contributing, what, what, what is just, what is what's the social norm, <coughs> and also about the quality. Whereas the top contributors, mostly, the top contributions mostly tell you about the perceived quality. Because the fact that somebody contributed 
a large amount, you know, I don't feel obliged to contribute that much or whether I want to contribute 15 or 20 should not really be affected whether some crazy guy contributed 10 times more and twi or 20 times more. For some reason, he wanted to contribute a lot or she, anonymous, uh, but I, I, I believe that that is more of a, more of a signal of, of, of quality uh, and, and, and this is relatively more of a signal of what would be the appropriate amount that a typical, uh, a typical customer should, uh, should contribute. Okay, so um, uh, we have uh, data from, uh, uh, from 18 of the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, from uh, 24 of these uh, sessions. Typical amounts that are contributed on average uh, range between uh, 15 and 30 zlotys. So these are low amounts. These are in the range of $8, $10. And, and typically, typically you have, you have uh, 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 around uh, 2,000 uh, uh, bundles sold on average. So these are not huge amounts that are involved. Uh, th this is a, a, a small market still. So just a, just a glimpse at the typical dynamics. One thing that is interesting to see, so these are just six. It's the beginnings, actually. They, they continue, but I, I wanted to cut it so that you can see the dynamics. The interesting thing is that after some initial variation, so this is the, the red line represents the mean amount, and the, and the blue dots are individual contributions. And you see that they're all over the place, but the mean is uh, extremely stable which is kind of interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> I've done most, uh, uh, mostly lab experiments in, uh, and, uh, and we are all, you know, people running lab experiments, we're, we're really used to declining, uh, declining contribution in VCM. But, but that's not what, what is happening. The, the, the mean is quite stable. It doesn't go down too much. <coughs> and so it's also uh, somewhat in, in contradiction to to, to what some of the literature on pay what you want uh, and brutal literature field from field data using field data tells us. But, but it's all over the place. So it's not that, that, that they are matching the mean. There are all sorts of, so there is, there is it's a bimodal, strongly bimodal. So if you look at the relative amount, so the amount you have contributed divided by the mean, the hist uh, mean previously, the mean is updated instantly, by the way, right? So you see the actual mean just before your contribution. So, so it's by model. There is uh, about 20 something percent of people who actually contribute the lowest possible amount, which is one zloty. And then there is a whole bunch of people who want to match the mean. Some people want to match the mean, but they uh, uh, round it up to uh, some round, uh, round number. <coughs> Hardly anybody contributes. Uh, uh, so so m the mean, uh, from this picture already, you can tell that the mean plays a huge role. So people want to match the mean, but there is also people who who contribute quite a bit, uh, who contribute quite a bit more. And the bonus for exceeding the 25 slot, it's, if it's uh, effective, it also seems to, seems to matter. The, the, the fraction of people who contribute exactly this amount is, is higher if, if, if it's uh, in the sessions, in the campaigns in which it's operating. Okay, so what we do is uh, we do a couple of things. So this is the simplest thing that you can do is you can look at uh, the uh, contributions just before and just after a large contribution. So a large contribution being a contribution that, uh, that uh, makes it to the top, the list of top eight contributors. So this would be like the highest contribution so far. So these are uh, the averages of amounts contributed just before a large contribution and just after the large contribution. So if a large contribution made people contribute more, you would see that these bars tend to be higher than these bars. The, these scales are different. So the, 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 this, the one in the center gets lower in every picture because this is the highest contribution ever. This is the second highest, so, so they, they must go down almost uh, statistically. So, so these scales are different. But the main point is that the bars after, the, uh, after a high contribution are, are not really systematically uh, different than the bars the before the contribution, so the, the top contributions do not matter. Another way to, to look at this is just to look at the, um, uh, a look at the, uh, uh, in, a, in a regression in which we just plug in the, uh, uh, what is the amount, like the highest amount that was contributed so far, second highest and so on, to check 
whether this, this is not, if we observe some effect of the, of the top eight contributors, we want to make sure that this is, uh, this is uh, d because people see that, so for comparison, we also have the lower contributions, which are not observable, and we see that there is very little going on here. <coughs> they are not even jointly significant. So people do not seem to be affected by, by, uh, by uh, top contributions. But they seem to be strongly affected by, by the mean. We, we, are, we run two things, actually. So we have a, uh, a quantile regression. So this, this is like the conditional median. And this is the eighth uh, uh, um, uh, decile. Because we were interested whether it affects different points in the distribution differently. You can argue that, uh, that these guys are those who are uh, affected by the incentives because if you meet, if you meet the, the mean, you get the additional books. If we're talking about the eighth decile, they are above that anyway. So, so here you have some positive effect, but it's, it's quite, a bit, quite a bit weaker. And by the way, we also, we also looked at the, uh, the number of transactions because you can say that, okay, it's not just the amount uh, that, that, uh, that matters, but also whether people make a transaction in the first place. So here we have the number of clients per minute. And, um, and here the, the mean has a negative impact, so, uh, which, which actually makes some sense. So if you can see that the mean is high, you can say if you're ashamed of contributing a low amount that, for instance, does not meet uh, the mean, or you want to match the mean because you want to get the bonus books, and so you may say, okay, I'm not gonna buy at all, or you can wait, maybe it will go down. We have seen that it doesn't really go down, um, but they don't know it, right? So, 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 so it has a negative impact on the, on the number of, of clients. Here we have, th this is kind of, uh, well, it, it looks like it could be something because the eighth price is, is, is a focal one, is the lowest of the top contributors. But as you can see, you know, you, you see a similar, these numbers are very small and, and you see similar things going on here. So, so this, this is uh, just an artifact. Uh, there's, there's very little, uh, very little there. <coughs> so just to summarize, um, mean contribution matters. It, it seems to uh, make people contribute more. We cannot fully disentangle whether this is a disincentive that is provided. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, control in which you don't have a direct incentive to, uh, to uh, but, but we have played with that a bit. So we have looked at relative attractiveness of the book that you're getting. And also, you know, like I said, the fact that you can get four books for one slot, are you gonna really, are, are you willing to pay 20, book, 20 slot for, for, for yet one book? Probably not really. So, so, so we cannot fully disentangle this, but, but we propose that it's partly about the message that, that the mean uh, 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 contribution conveys, that this is the right amount, this is the first thing to do. Whereas top contributions do not matter, like I said, we believe they, will, they, may, they could potentially affect the perceived quality. If somebody uh, paid 300 zlotis, then it's a signal that, that th these books are really nice. Apparently, people don't, do not take it uh, so strongly into, uh, into account. So s some preliminary, uh, preliminary conclusion is that social norms seem to be more important in this context than, uh, than quality uh, signaling which might, of course, have also to do with the fact that uh, uh, these contributions are not super high anyway. So people, somebody contributed 30 bucks, okay? It means he likes the books, but it's not that he puts, you know, a very substantial amount into that. So in this sense, it's not comparable with the context in which, okay, uh, a, a major uh, a corporation contributed a million dollars to a, to a, a cause, and, and then I believe that, that, that that's worth uh, following. So it might be that, that, that uh, uh, the, the fact that the, these top contributions are not really high makes some weak signals, uh, and that's why they don't matter. They don't seem to matter at all. Um, other than that, uh, I'm done. We are at a preliminary stage, still analyzing the data, so whatever, whatever suggestions you might have. These people may also be willing to, to run some experiments, so uh, if you have uh, uh, suggestions, then I'll be more than happy to hear them. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Well, this is Tom. Thank you very much. Um, is there, like, I can't read the messaging on the website, obviously, but is there, is there an expectation that the author of the book is going to receive this income or is it where right. the expectation to go to the website? 
good, good point. So I didn't, I didn't say that because, because of time, but in principle, you can, the, uh, you can split the money you're contributing any way you want. So there is a default, which I, th I think is like 50% for the authors and 30% for some foundation and then 20% for the organizers of this whole business. But you can change it. You can change it any way you want. A uh, vast majority of people just stick with the defaults. Yeah, so, so, so some, some of these, yeah, most, most of these are young authors who are kind of starting, but, but not, but they have experimented a bit with different kinds of uh, books. So, so one of these bundles was actually uh, some old uh, titles uh, from a very well-known author and actually uh, deceased, so it's money for, his, for the family. So, uh, <laughs> when, right, so, so, so we have the, they have the incentives for um, or reaching the mean in all the bundles, so we cannot say much. But uh, there are these incentives for reaching 25 lotties that are only in some bundles. But then again, they are different, so they are different, and the sample size is not so huge in terms of the number, number of campaigns. So I would be very cautious to say anything about that. But it seems to be the case that is is driving mostly upwards. But I, I'm, I'm, I cannot be sure about that. Do we have still time for a question or who's? Later. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>